A scallop can't swim through honey for the same reason that bacteria need flagella. That reason? It's called the scallop theorem. Let me explain. The scallop theorem, first described by physics Nobel laureate E.M. Purcell, is named for the reciprocating behavior of how a scallop swims. The simplest version of this motion is a hinge that closes quickly, opens slowly, then repeats. I hope we all have the intuition that, in water at least, such a repeated motion will result in motion away from the open direction of the hinge. But what Purcell argued is that if the viscosity is high enough, or more rigorously when the Reynolds number is negligible, any such reciprocating motion cannot result in transverse motion. As an aside, the Reynolds number for a liquid is the ratio between the inertial forces and viscous forces in said liquid. So let's look at that example of the scallop in more detail. Typically, a scallop swims by generating significant momentum during the rapid closing and, while maintaining that momentum, slowly opening its shell again, only slightly slowing down the process. And this works because the viscosity of water is low, so the drag isn't so high compared to the weight of the water being pushed around. Hence, it has a non-small Reynolds number. But plop that scallop into honey and it stops working. Even though the scallop moves forward when it shuts the hinge quickly, it stops immediately after the motion is complete. And when it reopens its hinge, no matter how slowly, it moves back the same distance. The key here is that in a liquid with low Reynolds number or high viscosity, drag is so high that its momentum is arrested almost instantly. Effectively, the only thing that affects the scallop's motion at a moment in time are those things that are happening to the scallop at that same moment. Its history just doesn't matter because no motion is maintained. Now the Reynolds number of a liquid gets smaller the more you zoom in, so bacteria and the like exist in a low Reynolds number world. So the question is, how do they swim in light of the scallop theorem? The trick is that only reciprocal motion is subject to the scallop theorem. What this means is that if a motion is performed and then reversed at perhaps a different speed, the scallop theorem applies. Otherwise, your little bacteria gets off scot-free. And that's why so many bacteria have flagella that, for example, spin like a corkscrew. They never actually reverse the motion. In fact, this explains why bacteria have much more sophisticated means of propulsion than scallops do. Scallops don't need it. Now, I'm not really sure what the takeaway of this video should be, so I guess don't be cruel and leave your scallops out of honey.